he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to another episode of Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson, two former college football players. Uh, we've got a week 12 preview episode that we're going to be doing. Uh, we didn't get to react to this and not react, but we didn't get to talk about this on the last show because we went on on Sunday for anyone who tuned into the live show. Just want to quickly say our thoughts and prayers for those around the Virginia football program. Obviously, terrible, terrible situation. Just want to provide recognition for that. Uh, and, you know, it's difficult time, very difficult circumstance, and hopefully that they can move on from it. They cancel their game this weekend, and it's understandably so. But uh, tough situation with losing multiple members of that football team and just hoping that things turn around for them soon. Yeah, it's it's really uh, a brutal situation. And then, I mean, it's tough because you have such an outpour from the campus where everyone showed up for the vigil and everybody was just – uh, uh, really heart appearing to be heartfelt in their condolences. And you just, you're like, okay, well, that's a really nice gesture. And you just hope that you never have to have that nice of a gesture. Right. You hope it never has to come to that. And it did. And it's just, uh, it's just, it's just bad. And this isn't, this isn't the first time you're hearing two commentators say this is an awful thing by any means. Right. Uh, but it just, um, I, it, it, the the perspective and the details on it, it it's uh it, it's it's not good it, it's just no so the yeah. the one thing though that just to wrap with this and then we'll do the read and then we'll actually get into the show the one thing that we always try to do on the show is we always try to draw parallels from like our time playing division one football and this is the only circumstance where we can't do that and I, all i was thinking about is like i couldn't even imagine being in that locker room like i just couldn't imagine trying to go to class to go to practice the next day knowing that happened to guys that you have been around every single day that you could have been around them that night and it's it's just terrible it's terrible and i'm again hoping that things turn around for them and and things turn go in a right in the right direction for that that virginia program i would have lost it we would have been inconsolable we would have been it's 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 the the at least from the outside perspective the way and the mature doesn't even need not maturity the way that the virginia football team is handling it yes uh is uh, better better men than me yeah better men than me because it's it's just uh, yeah i don't know better they're they're doing they're doing uh the best they can and all we can root for is that so we've got um we've got two games that we're going to preview on today's show um we're going to be talking about USC UCLA. We're going to be talking about the uh, Oregon Utah game. Before we do get to that, Sean, could you just share with our listeners a quick note from Bell Online? Yeah. So I guess I'll start plugging this, even though it goes against a lot of the fibers in my being. But a lot of you frauds out there are going to start talking about the World Cup soon. And uh, I, I'm not looking I, forward to I that. Just, I just, I'm like, it's in, it's going to be infringing on the Thanksgiving football for the NFL. It's going to be infringing on college football uh, for that awesome weekend that we have slated. I, but if you like the World Cup and you like soccer, which you don't, but you want to be included uh, because there's a couple uh, uh, handsome people on your timeline that talk about soccer, then go ahead put a put, put a couple wagers down at BetOnline.ag. I, I right. I guess I don't know. I I might be rooting against the U.S. just so we can all just move past it. Yeah, uh, soccer stinks, and I refuse to watch it. And it also makes me really happy that the the lodging and the situation at that event is terrible. Soccer stinks. It's the yeah. most overrated thing on this planet. Uh, and that's my final thought on that. When I started, when I was working at Sirius, I, uh, I was working a lot with soccer, cutting their highlights and post game and stuff like that. So I started to grow a little bit of an appreciation for it some way, mm-hmm. in, in a way, because their commentators and their play by play and color commentators are fantastic. And you're like, wow, like these are really good broadcasters. And then since I've been out of that line of work, uh, I have disassociated myself with soccer in a tremendous fashion but if you like soccer and you want to bet on the boys uh, uh repping the red white and blue go ahead head up betonline.ag and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus with your first deposit make sure to use the promo code believe b-l-e-a-v to receive your rewards bet online where the game starts 
All right. Thank you, Sean. So for anyone who is paying attention to the college football landscape, the talking point last week was how, and we talked about it ad nauseum. I don't know why I keep using that word. We talked about it so much on last week's live stream, live stream at the end of the week, not live string. Holy shit. The Pac-12 is making headlines because they were so competitive this year. They were, and they direction with the outcomes of the games of this past weekend with the Oregon loss with the UCLA loss and now they're back in the headlines because they're the only two ranked on ranked matchups that we have this weekend none of the other conferences have anything so we've got UCLA hosting USC which that there's no road advantage there you've got Utah going to play Oregon starting with USC and UCLA first of all the hilarity of the fact that they passed up going to the Rose Bowl to host game day is perfectly fitting. It's apparently a uh, a full crowd. And Sean, I didn't know if you knew this or not, but they stated that it's a full, you know, a, a sold out crowd. I didn't know this, that they block off like 20,000 of the seats with tarps. Did you know that they do this, that they don't take the full capacity for UCLA games? So they're not actually sold out. Yeah, a lot of baseball stadiums do this where it's just the top rows. They'll just tarp it on up, and then you're like, oh, well, look at this. We just won't show the top level. Uh, the the skins here in D commanders here in D.C., they're big time on that, where we're just going to show everybody in the lower bowl, and they're all having a good time, chopping it up, eating a half smoke. Uh, but you, you look up into this top stands, it's all tarped off. You're like, oh, well. Those are our seats that aren't being used. So uh, it does not surprise me that a California football stadium is doing this. It doesn't surprise me in the least. And it, it's but embarrassing. UCLA of all school, too, is doing it. The one that has had trouble filling its stadium that apparently, again, has a, a massive student section and a sold out crowd. Yeah, California is embarrassing. California football is embarrassing yeah. uh, from the from the everywhere except for those uh, San Francisco, San Francisco fans travel. That's it. San Francisco fans go to the 49ers rather go to the games. And other than that, embarrassing up and down Stanford when they're good, I guess teams show up or, or fans show up, but when's the last time Stanford has been good and competitive and, and really been a decade ago. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe, maybe with one of the McCaffrey teams, right? Maybe, maybe that first no, Bryce that, Love team. Uh, uh, I don't even remember how good that Bryce Love team was, but that might have been the most the most recent time. But the other thing I want to just throw in there, I, I will shit on, but I actually kind of root for UCLA. I will shit on USC any opportunity that I have. They have one of the worst uh, stadiums for like a major brand in college football. Like that stadium stinks. The Coliseum stinks. It feels like it felt like when we were going into that Harvard stadium when we played at Harvard, just like a slightly better version of that. It's outdated. It's a dump. You're supposed to be a big national brand. Why don't you have a better stadium? This is just all these hacks that I hear. And one person in my office is like, oh, I have heard, I, who had never even been to the Coliseum. Oh, I, I've, I've heard only nothing but positive things about the Coliseum. These are the, the, the fucking losers that are like, it's, 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 a, uh, it's a, a, a historic stadium. It's just, it's just a great environment. It's not. It sucks. It's 2020. If it was built as, as long ago as it was, it's outdated. Okay, I, I'm not going to jump on you for your bias because I think that for a long for the longest time I've I've held uh, a lot of uh, uh, contempt for the stadium in New, in New Orleans, the Superdome. I, I used to I, I didn't like that both Atlanta and uh, and uh, uh, the Super, Superdome both shared Mercedes. So I'm glad that they're now the Little Caesars. Uh, Superdome. So I, I, I understand. Really? I know that. I understand the the disliking of a rival's stadium. So I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna be a hypocrite here and knock you, even though it's a it's a very thinly veiled rationale that you've just provided us. Yeah, I don't really care, and everyone can eat it. Um, eat it. This, this game specifically. Yeah, whatever you want. You can <laughs> my ass. Whatever you want. Oh <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this game getting into the weeds of it. I think if UCLA had not lost to Arizona, I would sit here and I'd be staking my claim in why UCLA is going to win this football game. And I saw some, some guy in the LA times, I forget who I think it was Plashke who wrote an article saying, providing his argument for why UCLA was going to win this week. 
I can't sit here and make that argument after seeing the results that they put on the field against Arizona. Yeah. One of the worst teams in the Pac-12. And that to me is 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 the main takeaway here. As important as this rivalry is, as apparently as heated as it is when these teams are both really, really good, I can't put my chips in on a team that is coming off of a hangover loss because you were looking too far ahead at the next team. USC is going to win this game. As much as I hate them, as much as I detest them, they're in the much better positioning. They have the momentum. It is hard to turn around after a bad loss, and you and I know that perfectly from a number of them that we suffered in college, especially that one winning year that we had that we should have made the playoffs. Bad losses will completely derail your season. Yeah, Yeah, they will. Uh, and this uh, USC team, here's the thing, somehow USC's biggest rival is just going to help them make the playoff if they went out. Somehow Notre Dame being ranked and keep it going. Let's keep the, let's keep the trend moving, move them up to 14 maybe next week. Who but, cares? But, but and then Sean, we'll... no, only thing, I don't mean to cut you off, uh-huh. you're over, you're you're being way too confident about Notre Dame beating Boston College this weekend, which I don't have any faith that they're going to. I have you're a liar. You're doing the bit. No, they've done this. They they do this every goddamn year. They suddenly every it doesn't matter what the record was at the beginning of the year. Put Boston, your glasses back on. Why Boston, are you, why are you yelling Boston me like College my dad? has notoriously <laughs> been the one team that has fucked so many things up for Notre Dame. So that's all I have to say. But continue. Okay, but here's the thing. Uh, USC is going to be playing very inspired football here because they're on the bubble of making it. They truly are. Uh, and they know that if they beat UCLA, uh, then they can, uh, if they are looking at this schedule, they know they can win and win, 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 win. And no matter what UCLA ranked, it, it doesn't matter because Notre Dame just dropped two to two very, very bad teams. Right. But now we're saying we can help ourselves. We can get help. And then we could stomp out Notre Dame and then, Maybe our resume is better. We can get some more help. We can get some more teams coming through here. A couple SEC, maybe an SEC team takes a, a, a shocker trap loss. Maybe TCU gets their first loss. They won't make it with one loss. They just won't. Uh, so this USC team, I think, is going to roll uh, versus UCLA. I don't think. Uh, is there a home field advantage in either of these? No, it doesn't. Is it? So the one thing that I was just quickly looking up while you were you were sharing a really good argument here. First of all, again, you made the really good point is that USC has something that they're playing for. Like oh, this is you. this is very important, and they're going to be very inspired. And as much as people will love to use the argument, oh, UCLA wants to play spoiler to their rival, but I, I don't think you're discounting the importance of this game and their possibility of making the playoff. But the one thing I was thinking about in my head while you were saying that. Mm-hmm is how this isn't like when Alabama traveled to play LSU or when Alabama traveled to play Tennessee, where the home field very clearly took over the game. The crowd took over the game. Yes. You know the irony of this game and and, and it being played in the Rose Bowl? USC is closer by 10 minutes to the Rose Bowl than UCLA is because Westwood's all the way by the water. And I wanted to double check before I made that statement. You got to come all the way from, from Westwood compared to downtown uh, Los Angeles to just Uh. go straight up to Pasadena. That that's the, the hilarity of it. And there's a reason why no one talks about or ever. Yeah. You got to take the four Oh five and then you got to get, you know, you got to merge and do all that. uh, They might be the, it might be the 10. I don't, I've made that trip before, but, um, (laughs) <laughs> ah, roads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should, stay tuned. We're going to start talking about cables soon. <laughs> should, should that just be our argument for any game? Is whoever has the best sounding highway that they have to get on to to, to travel is the here's is the, the pr- advantage. Here's the problem: is that California they say the before the road, yeah. and this is not like a a new thing that I've just discovered or, or listeners have discovered, but that might be unique enough to give them an edge, just because no one else does that. Yeah, but they're playing I, each other. I know, I know, I know. But I'm saying in general for rating roads and highway systems and how, oh, they're, how nice. they're named. Like some people be annoyed by that. But I'm like, oh, you kind of got your own thing. Like New York is saying standing online instead of in line. I'm in line. I'm online. It, it's it's a little bit of a bit. I, I still prefer the 95s out here uh, east. I like four, 
four ninety five sounds great. Three ninety five, two ninety five, I ninety five, Route One South. All that stuff is pretty great. Like you, you know a lot of roads. This guy knows a lot of. Uh, roads. I know a lot of roads. <laughs> I'll go up sixty six east, and not the not the big Route sixty six, but you know. But, look, the only reason around. why we we it. The only reason why it's called the is because you waste so much time on the goddamn thing, but that's a, a separate issue. My main point here, there's no home field advantage. It's probably no. going to be a split crowd. There might even be more USC people in the crowd of this game because a lot of USC people that get high end jobs uh, in Los Angeles live in Pasadena. They live in the Valley and they can probably commute and get to this game easier than any student can from UCLA. Mm. I'm liking this uh, this California talk, this insight that I'm getting from my California expert right now. Yeah, I'm not an expert. Uh, I, I some jackass is going to just come in the comments and be like, "Well, actually," um, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a marathon going on that day, so USC is going to have to take a, a different route, and then uh, it, they're going to get there at the same time. I'm sure. Whatever at USC playing for something, and if you're playing for something in college, then you can inspire some 22 year olds to go out there and play a little bit harder. Right, and if we're actually talking about what's happening on the field here, um, I understand that USC has a bit of a suspect secondary, which I've I've talked about before. And Dorian Thompson Robinson has been one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and Charbonnet has produced just so many good games on the ground. And I, yeah. I think you need DTR to step up like you almost in a way need to out duel Caleb Williams. If the production that they allowed to Arizona's quarterback, and I'm blanking on his name. If Caleb Williams oh, gets that I hot, that early as Arizona's offense did and their quarterback did, they're done. Game's over. Yeah. Jaden Delora. There's that's who it is. Yeah, Such yeah. A nothing name. He went for, he went for three eighty and three touchdowns versus uh, USC. He just got, they got dogged by the most nobody quarterback in, in college football. Yeah, was it, which team is going to overthink Zach Charbonnet? By the way, in the draft, who's going to overthink him? Uh, Ryan Roberts hates him. Right, I was high on him. I was really high on How him. How is that Ryan, even possible? Well, he's like, oh, he's you know, he's kind of stiff and he's not that explosive. And I'm like, but he's oh, his other argument is like for a big back, he's not that downhill. But like, I mean, the guy's got like a good gear for how big he is. I. I'm happy with Tyler Algier in Atlanta, but Zach Charbonnet seems like a, a better Tyler Algier, and that kind of gets me fired up. So if we're talking about stiffness, we're talking about how people run, and mm. how, uh, uh, Charbonnet is is a dude, okay? So that that's an odd take from somebody who I respect. All right, Sean, let's talk about this other game that we have here going on in the Pac-12, and all these games this weekend are really important for who's going to be playing in the Pac-12 championship game. There are no longer divisions it is the top two teams. So likely the winner, if USC wins, I don't know the, the the total mathematics of this, but the winner of this game is going to slot in for the Pac-12 championship. Like this is going to have serious implications on who plays in the game. It is an advantage that they're playing at Oregon. And we know that the impacts of playing at Autzen Stadium. But there's one thing that I am very hung up on. Is Bo Nix healthy? He went out for a series against Washington. He seemingly looked a little off at the end of the game. And we know the issues with Ty Thompson. They also have injuries that they're dealing with on their offensive line. So injuries might be what keeps Oregon from winning this football game. Why is everyone in the Pac-12 red? Why? I'm trying to go through this Utah schedule here. Every logo in the Pac-12 is red. Stanford, Utah, anyway. Arizona, Washington State. USC, Oregon State, Orange, Arizona State, Red. Ugh. It's bad God. colors. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine, but geez. Enough of the parody. Um, yeah. I thought that Bo Nix was, like, hopping ready to get back in the game uh, in the in his previous game uh, to go and, and maybe uh, score a late touchdown to win it, but that obviously did not happen. Uh, so, Oregon – last week looked like a, a shell of themselves losing to Washington. And it's like, okay, you made me look like a jerk for believing in you. I look like a jerk now. That's okay. We, we move past it, but now they have to go up against notorious frauds in Utah. Uh, and I, I don't like this Utah team. I, I don't like uh, how I can't predict them. I don't like that. They have 
some gritty wins and some very questionable losses, but that's college football. I get it. I'm I'm not going to overthink this one. I'm going to say Bonix plays just on speculation, uh, and I'm going to say Oregon returns to their or, or Utah returns to their fraud selves. I ha- I have to go with that. I can't overthink this, or else it's going to be uh, frustrating because then you start rooting for Utah, and then mm-hmm. how do you do that? Right. This game. It, it, I don't want to lean on the fact of the Oregon loss too much because they had a very difficult circumstance of multiple bad injuries popped up at the end of the game when they needed guys to step up, especially Bo Nix. Like that, that stuff is, is so detrimental to a game that you're in at the very end and it's a really tight, close battle. I lean Utah on this one, Sean, mm. because of one, assuming that Bo Nix isn't fully healthy and he's dealing with, some type of a nagging injury. But the other thing too, we watched already what Utah did to USC secondary, which is equally as bad in my opinion as Oregon secondary and their pass defense. Dalton Kincaid, their yeah, tight end man off. is a dude. Like he is a monster and he is one of the most unguardable players in the Pac-12. I don't see anybody on Oregon's defense that can cover him. I think Cam Rising, assuming that he's not dealing with any nagging issues, This is going to be a winnable game for Utah. Uh, There's just a lot of things that are working in the opposite direction of Oregon. The big, big main thing is the injuries. Injuries in college football will take you out of football games, and that's that's the case here. Yeah, the uh, Oregonian stating that Ryan Walk and Alex Forsyth on the offensive line, they are unclear to be uh, playing in this game, and you have brought it to my attention that this Oregon offensive line is – pretty solid when, when all healthy and they're able to uh, provide Bo Nick some time and they can open up the run game. Uh, and then it, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's a tight end. You can scheme for a tight end. Can't you at least a college tight end, but maybe not, maybe Dalton you see, Kincaid you scheme we've... to cover or, or scheme cover uh, offensively. I, I guess, but USC couldn't figure out how to do it. Just leave the lights. We don't, don't you just, whatever. I don't know just why happened. it just turned off. Yeah. I got four things. I got four things routed into this uh, into this USB dongle. To the point, though, you're talking about with the tight ends. USC couldn't stop him, and I think this could be another one of those games where he he pops off. Doesn't Oregon have some dudes in the back in the secondary, or was that just last they year? That was last, just last year. year. Yeah, Verone McKinley was one of those guys. They had a bunch of dudes. Uh, and yes, they just, yes, yes. This year that they've been so suspect, and they gave up so many yards and so many big plays to Michael Penix, Michael Penis Jr., as we like to talk about him on this. No, that's what you program. call him because uh, you have no discipline. <laughs> no, his someone someone like misquoted him and said that that was his name. I forget what it was. I'm gonna look it up after the show. I'm but, sure that's a productive use of your time. It, it is a productive use of my time, and I've got people like calling me with more important things that I have to now uh, I have to now figure out. Um, but to that point, Sean, um, I, I've just they've given up a lot of big big plays, big plays. I, but Oregon, as much as I I'm down on them. They make a lot of big plays. We saw it in the Washington State game. We saw it. We said we we saw them turn it on, and they started making big plays. I'm not going. I'm not going to lean Utah. I will not. I refuse. I refuse to lean Utah. For what I refuse. Reasoning? For what reasoning? They stink. What? That there was no. There's no evidence behind that. I get yes, that Florida is. loss is, is 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 disappointing, and they also lost yes. to UCLA. Oh, disappointing! They stink. Overall, the the Pac-12 has been a little bit hard to predict because of everyone just beating up on each other. All these top teams beating up on each other. Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of like the SC, how the SEC has been operating this year. Right, four teams just just punching each other in the face until one bows out. Right, um, Sean, I think it's going to wrap us up on at Joe DeLeon. At Sanderson Radio. Hack City on YouTube. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. We will be back with more. We'll be doing our live stream on Sunday.